Hello everyone and welcome to a very special video because I have here, as you can see it's big, I have a big box. Uh, now I want to give a huge, and I mean huge, huge, huge shout out to Kath and Alan Johnson because this box is full of figures. These are spare figures that they didn't want um, and they have very kindly donated them to me. This is this is, uh, I get a lot of, I buy a lot of um, boxed figures and things over the years, you know, spares, boxes and things like that. But this is the biggest one I've ever had. And so, for them to just donate them to me, it means absolutely the world. Because there are, um, there's a few things in here I know that are in here, because they sent me a few pictures of what's in here. But there are a lot of loose figures, some of which I know, some of which I don't know. So, let's get straight on into this and unbox it to take a look and see what mysteries we have. Uh, I'm probably going to do this, try to unbox it all in the one video, in the one shot, but we'll see, I may have to cut. So. Let's take a look, see in what we've got. I have a note, which I'll read. To Jimmy Wolf, we hope you enjoy making new and wonderful custom figures with all of these figures. I've also given you two sealed figures, which have had, which I've had for many years, but have never opened. I've tried to sell them on a store, usually around from time to time, but no one was interested in them. Hope you enjoy making new custom figures out of these old figures, and I look forward to seeing what you make in future. Uh, what you make in future content. I've been a fan of your work for a while and I've always wanted to help you out in some way, shape or form. Best wishes, Kath and Alan. Uh, Alan and Kath, it says here. Um, so yes, again, thank you, uh, Alan and Kath. It means absolutely the world to me that you've, you've donated these figures. Um, it, it, it really does, it helps me in so many ways when people donate figures because I know a lot of people want to support my Patreon for example and they can't because they can't afford it. Well, donating spares and custom figures, it, that that helps so much as well because obviously that saves, that saves me a lot of money. Uh, so, we have, woohoo! Well, we've got a lot of Daleks in there and we've got the boxed figures. Um, I actually, the, the picture they sent me, I only saw the two Daleks so, uh, it's going to be fantastic to go through all of these Daleks because um, we've certainly got some in here. So let's let's go through. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to cut here and then I'm going to try and get the camera a bit closer. Right, I've just moved the camera so uh, it's now propped up against the box. I moved the box under a light so we got a bit better. So, uh, wow. Uh, already, I'm looking in this and I'm seeing some quite fairly rare pieces, um, which. It's fantastic to have, bearing in mind as said, these have all been donated to me. It's fantastic that I've had these donated because there are pieces in here that I wouldn't get in a million years. Um, but let's start off with the box figures one by one. So we have uh, to start off with a regenerated uh, Temp Doctor figure. Now this one is not a particularly rare figure, but um, what's nice to have about this um, is that it does have the newer um, head sculpt on it. And if you're very careful, these can actually be cleaned up. Um, so it's it's very nice to uh, to um, to have that as as part of the collection because it's certainly one that I can use uh, for parts. But recently, I did actually acquire um, a um, regenerated eleventh um, Doctor in this same set, and so I didn't. I was going to get one of these, so I might keep this one boxed actually to put alongside the other because then it really will sort of. Uh, you know, I've got the 10th Doctor and then I've got the 11th Doctor, so yeah, it's nice It's nice to have that because again, that's one that I can either use as good parts for spares or if I decide to keep it, it saved me money getting another one. Uh, now this one, <laughs> this is the what I thought at the time, I thought this was going to be the gem of the box, but now I'm seeing how many Daleks and things are in here that I could be wrong here, but um, sorry, uh, this is a Green Death 3rd Doctor. Now these aren't that rare again. They are, they're, they're not easy to get hold of, but they're not incredibly rare. Um, however, the reason that this is the gem for me is because this was actually the first third Doctor figure that I'd ever bought, and um, I bought it brand new when it was in Forbidden Planet, um, and then I ended up having it on my shelf, and I ended up using it 
to uh, create some customs um, and I believe it is now underneath what is now my mutants custom uh, is, is more or less the base figure of that but so yeah I bought this I then unboxed it and did all the custom parts with it and then I sort of realized how much they'd started to go up in price and it was it was sort of the first time I realized how much classic Doctor Who figures could be worth so I was gutted I was absolutely gutted that I'd unboxed it so to have this one now back in a box is is brilliant it's fantastic for me I'm very 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 happy to have this um, so yeah that certainly is as I said what I thought was going to be the gem um, but my 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 look at what we've got here so let's <laughs> let's have a look at what we've got obviously the, the red bag is all of the um, is all of the boxed figures uh, uh, the box figures the loose figures but we have many, many Daleks. Now, I'm probably going to get a few of these wrong. Um, so if I do get a few of them wrong, I'm going to put annotations in the um, uh, in the video just to correct myself. So let's start over here. Now, this one I think is fairly obvious, at least this to me is fairly obvious. This is a uh, Chase Dalek. And the reason I can tell that is because it's got the um, it's got the gun arm with the flames. Obviously the flames aren't in there, but that doesn't bother me because it's the Fle it's the Dalek that's 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 the great piece, not the flame. So um, yeah, this is a nice one to have because again, it's got the orange lights on it. It's a little bit different, but again, it could be one that I could use for spares. Um, as I said, the, 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 these Daleks are varying; they're varying degrees of rarity. And um, what I'll do actually, I'll, I'll bring this one out. So this one here is obviously, this is the, that's uh, actually from the, that's not the one I'm looking for. That's, is that the one I'm looking for? No, I'll find one in a second. Here we go. So this one here, I knew there was one in here somewhere. So this is the Emperor's Guard Dalek. Now these are a dime a dozen. These are, these are really, really cheap to get hold of. So if I ever want to do classic Dalek spares, this is usually one I buy. Um, but... For that reason, any other classic Daleks I get, even the 60s ones like this, I'm always very cautious about dismantling them. So this one and a few other 60s Daleks I can see in here are probably ones I'm definitely not going to um, to dismantle. Um, so obviously we've got those two. Very, very nice. So this one, as I said, this is the Emperor's Guard Dalek, but this one is the one that I believe came with the uh, second Doctor um, figure, Evil of the Daleks figure, because it's got the yellow eye lights on it, which again makes it a makes it a different variant to the other ones that I've got. Um, so again, this is one that I will definitely keep uh, in its in it in its current form because it's it's a you know it's a different variant. So um, it's this is where I'm slightly difficult to say things about these Dalek figures because I I know a bit, but I don't know a, a lot if that makes sense. Um, next up we have an anti-lightwave Dalek. Um, now obviously those people who saw my um, who saw my uh, recent um, Stengos Dalek custom figure showcase will know that I use one of these for that. Um, obviously I've got a few of these which I've already taken the paint off. Um, but at present time I don't have the need to take the paint off any others. So this is one I actually, for now, um, I'm probably going to keep this one as it is because I've got, like I said, I think well, I've got one over on my desk there. I've got one upstairs. I've got the Stengos one upstairs. I've got the one on my desk to uh, the really clear version, which I've completed, uh, which I've tried to make as clear as possible, three. And then I've got my um, materializing revelation Dalek. So I've got four. Now, obviously, I've got five of these. Um, but this is one that I probably will keep as it is because it is as, as nice as it is to have a clear one. I've got clear one. I've got several clear ones. So it'd be nice to keep one in the manner it was always intended to be displayed. So um, that is definitely one that will be sticking around. Uh, so next we have uh, an Asylum Dalek. And I believe, it doesn't look like it's got batteries in it. No, but this is a sound effects version. Um, again, I might keep this one as is, but because this is one of the later updated new series Dalek sculpts. Um, these tend to be the ones that 
I buy for when I'm doing new series Daleks. So it's nice to have the Asylum Dalek, and again, it would be a nice one to keep in the collection, but uh, I, may, I may reuse this in future. Um, so far, actually, there's... I've got the... I've got... The Emperor Dalek is the one that I'm probably going to mainly use, so I might use, use that one in future as well. Um, we have another Emperor Dalek there without a head, but that's not a problem. Again, this is, this, this is the one that... This is the kind of thing that will be useful for spares, because... It hasn't got the head, but I've got so many of those heads spare, the black heads, because I've taken them off, I've swapped them over. So, again, that's a perfect thing for spares. But looking at that, maybe I won't use it for spares, because that appears to be... That is a sound effects version, in which case, that is not one that I'm going to use for spare. I'm, I should probably check the other ones, if they're sound effects versions, apart from the... Apart from the um, New series Dalek, I don't believe there are any other sound effects versions, but that is definitely one that I'm going to repair and keep as a sound effects Dalek. Because the sound effects Daleks are actually quite rare now, so that's another good one to have. Um, when I saw the top of that missing, I just assumed that was a normal one. So, we have another sound effects Dalek. We have a... We have a... <laughs> we have a Revelation sound effects Dalek. Again, another fantastic rare piece to have. I was going to, again, I'm looking through all of these. There's a lot of these here I'm looking at thinking, well, that'd be another one that's useful for spares because I've got, I've got a really old Remembrance Dalek, um, which hasn't had anything done with it. Um, and I was going to, oops, I was going to try and repair it. Um, but now that this one, again, this is a, the fact that this is a sound effects Dalek, I'm definitely going to keep that one in, uh, in good condition. This is, uh, again, I, huge, huge thanks to Catherine Alan Johnson for this. I mean, this is... Uh, I, I dread to think how much a lot of this would have cost me to get in future, but uh, here it is, and I've got it I've got it all. So we have here... Now, these are the ones I'm going to get a bit confused by. This is... I believe... This is a... Um, resurrection of the Daleks. Dalek, which is very nice, because I don't have... I actually don't have many grey... Renegade Daleks are in my collection at all. So this is certainly one that I am going to keep uh, as it as it is because again this just looks great in terms of in terms of uh, as part of a collection and I believe this one here uh, this is also from Revelation of the Daleks. I'm guessing the way I you can usually tell with the Revelation Daleks one is, is they've got the they've got the the coned as I call it eye stalks. Um, so yeah, it's very nice to have these. In fact, I now I could be wrong here, but uh, I believe this is the Revelation of the Daleks standard version. This one might have come with the Fifth Doctor double pack figure. Again, I could be wrong on that. You'll see a you'll see a uh, annotation if I am. But uh, so I've got two different variants. In fact, you can see the paint, or at least I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but I can certainly see the paint difference between the two. So it's very nice to have those two. So this, I believe, is a remembrance of the Daleks, uh, Renegade Dalek. Again, another Dalek that I have never had in my collection. So uh, it's certainly a nice one to have because it's interesting to see the different uh, slats on it and the smaller the uh, smaller eye stalk. So again, very nice to have another classic grey Renegade Dalek. Uh, now this one uh, is missing its um, eye stalk. It could be in the bottom of the box somewhere for all I know. It is missing its eye stalk, but again that wouldn't be a difficult thing to put back together. So I believe this is a Genesis of the... No, I don't think it is Genesis of the Daleks. Okay, this is the mystery one. Um, this is definitely one that's going to come up with an annotation at the bottom. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It's got a double two-tier base, which is why I thought it was Genesis, but it's also got the black slats and the black mid-ring. I believe, I think that this is another Remembrance Dalek, but I will... No, it can't be Remembrance Dalek because it's got the thinner slats. In that case, it's got to be a Resurrection Dalek. Um, as I said, again, you know, annotation at the bottom to say what it is, but that is certainly a very interesting Dalek. Um, yes, that's a, that's a nice little mystery one to have there. Uh, next we have this one, which is the Supreme Dalek from the uh, Dalek inv uh, from the Chase Dalek Invasion of Earth, the Black Dalek. Again, I know these are quite well sought after. Um, 
Obviously, for those who know, I'm doing a Mission to the Unknown figure animation um, in which this Dalek technically does appear, but I'm not going to use this Dalek um, actually in the animation. I've come up with something a bit different for that. Um, one of which I actually might be able to, looking at it, I might be able to use the Emperor Dalek for the spares on that because I've been waiting to get another one of those. So in fact, that might appear into the appear in the Mission of the Unknown um, figure, uh, figure animation, in which case, um, in fact, I will do that, and then that gives me a chance to give uh, Alan and Kath an extra credit uh, in the film. So, again, that's a very nice one that I'm going to definitely going to keep um, as it is. So, moving around the back. Oh, there we go. I found a, I found a head, and I found a head from. Now, actually, that looks like that would go on the sound effect. I've turned it off. But that looks like that head goes with that. I will double check that, but I believe that's where that one comes with. So that is a, again, a power or evil of the Daleks, sound effect Dalek. Uh, again, fantastic to have that. Uh, so let's go through what else is in the box here. So we have another mystery, da oh, no, no, this isn't a mystery Dalek. I believe this definitely is a, um, this definitely is a genesis of the Daleks Dalek because it has the um, it has the bronze gun on it. So obviously, again, it's missing its um, eye stalk, but that could be floating in the bottom of the box somewhere. If not, I know I've got some spares. Um, but this is def ah, this is definitely a genesis of the Daleks Dalek because it's got the uh, it's got what I call the the in the episode, not an actual prototype. In the episode, it's got the prototype silver. Bit. So that is definitely Genesis of the Daleks. That's a very nice one to have because that is, in a way, um, in terms of the in terms of the show, that is obviously the first Dalek, um, or at least one of the first. So next we have the Supreme Dalek. Oh, <laughs> the Supreme Dalek, whose eye stalk, even on mine, has always been a bit loose. Uh, so that does happen. But we have the Supreme. Dalek from Planet of the Daleks. That is a fantastic nice one to have. I already have one of these in my collection, but uh, given their rarity, I'm certainly not going to complain about having another one. So that is a very, very nice Dalek to have. Uh, next, we have uh, a Saucer Pilot Dalek. Um, again, this these, rather like the um, Emperor's Guard Dalek, these are dime a dozen, but it's always nice to have because it's always nice to have a spare uh, large base, so that can certainly be used for uh, customs and things. Next we have a Destiny of the Daleks Suicide Dalek. Now uh, obviously as you can see the Destiny of the Daleks Daleks had a much lighter grey paint scheme so again they were ones that I was never that bothered about getting but I loved the uh, Suicide Dalek <laughs> with the little bombs on it because again it's something a bit different so it's certainly nice to have that because that is one that I've been looking to get for quite a while so um, and they are, they're not cheap. They're not really expensive, but, and they're not particularly rare, but they're not, they're not cheap. So it's definitely nice to have that one in, in my collection because it is one that I've been looking for for uh, quite a while now. So we're getting to the end of the Daleks now. Hiding away in this corner, we have an Asylum uh, drone Dalek. Now, I've never had my hands on one of these before. Um, this is the first time I've seen one of the metallic uh, drones. This is certainly a very nice one to have because in my Asylum collection so far, I need to pick another one, another one up. I actually don't have the red Dalek. I've got all the main, these are the original colored Daleks, the bright colored ones. Um, I don't have a red one, so this is certainly gonna be interesting to put in the lineup. Um, obviously, it's got the Asylum stamp on it, so I will get a brightly colored one just to, to match up with the others. But this is the first time I've seen a metallic paradigm Dalek. And I'm gonna say something very controversial now. I actually prefer the bright colors. And I know I know that sounds odd because this doesn't, don't get me wrong, this doesn't look bad at all. But the darker metallic just makes it look like it has been in, in the asylum for a long time and and I think if you haven't seen it already um, please go and check it out um, my redesigned red paradigm I did that had a bright red with a slight metallic tint I think that works better because it still looks the bright colors but it is metallic at the same time so um, yeah it, this is certainly again an interesting Dalek to have and this is definitely one that I will 
keep uh, in my collection um, because again the the paradigm Daleks the, the colored ones are a dime a dozen so I wouldn't want to take apart this one but it's a very nice one to have as I said because it's not one that I've had uh, before we have here more Daleks so let's break in and see what we've got break in um, so we have here a Dalek random Dalek I'm not exactly sure which one this is from um, is this a so this is a again a narrow this is always the base has always confused me but this is a newer sculpt version um, now again I'll have to look this up because I could be wrong but I know there is the crucible there's, there's the crucible Dalek which has the claws and things on it um, I'm not sure ah oh, this could be a progenitor Dalek actually from series 5 I believe that's what this is that's why it's got the newer sculpt because that was the one of the first or the second newer sculpts, or the first newer sculpt of series five, but the second newer sculpt they made of the Daleks. So again, that's nice to have because it's not a it's not a sound effects one or anything, but that's a very useful one to have in terms of spare parts and things like that. Um, so next up, we have just another uh, just another Dalek. Um, this could be, I believe, this is a power of the <laughs> power of the Daleks. Dalek. I could be wrong. It's missing its wheels, but I've got lots of those spare. Um, not entirely sure what this is from, so I will look this up before I do anything with it. But again, just as a, as a standard classic Dalek, it's going to make very good use of spares if it's nothing particularly rare. Uh, then we have, oh, another one. Oh, this is a, a classic 60s Dalek, Dead Planet Dalek. Again, very useful to have in terms of spares because they just are useful to have in terms of spares. So I'm not really sure what I do with the dead planet Daleks. I'm sure I'll come up with a few ideas. Um, I'm sure people are going to be going mad suggesting things in the comments. Um, but uh, as, as I've said before, when it comes to customs, uh, if I say no to an idea, it's because it's just not one that interests me. I like to do ideas that are going to interest me. Um, I'm sure there are some things I can do with that. But again, if not, it's just useful. It's always good to have as Dalek spares. And oh, there is some loose parts in here. We got ah, <laughs> we have a um, Ironside Dalek with his cup of tea. Again, this is a nice one to have because uh, the Ironside Daleks. I used to have. I had a couple of these, and um, I had them uh, on a uh, on a on my desk at a at a place I was working that was. Um, uh, it's uh, made um, survival equipment and things like that. So I had, I had two of these, and I had a Churchill figure on my desk there. And when I left, they were shipped back to me. And unfortunately, uh, when they were shipped back, the place I was living in at the time uh, had some other not very nice people living in it, and they were stolen. Um, so it's nice to have one of these back again. It's a shame I haven't got my original ones, but it's a nice. It's nice to have these ones back again, and it's nice to have the one with the T because that is, that is so quintessentially undalek. So that is definitely, uh, it's definitely a nice one, <laughs> a nice one to have in the collection. So we don't have anything else. So now we get on to the figures themselves. So I'm going again, just going to quickly readjust the camera to get to this. So we have two big bags of figures. The other one's still in the box, actually. I can grab that out. Two big boxes of figures. Is there anything floating around in the bottom of the box? Yes, there is. Some Dalek eye stalks. Hey, that's what I was hoping. And the flames. Flames in the bottom of the box, which we have, so it's nice to have those. And, okay, well that's certainly very interesting. Um, Nice to have. It's a picture of uh, Matt Smith signed by Stephen Moffat. Um, I'm sure some people are going to make jokes about that, but that is definitely a. It's, a, it's an, actually not a bad piece to have because it's a nice promo picture of Matt. And uh, not quite sure why it's signed by Stephen. Obviously, that's who was there at the time. But yeah, that's a. That is a very nice little extra thing to have. So let's keep that in there. Um, so, <laughs> let's get on to the figure. So I'm going to do one bag at a time. So, we have, I'm sure many of you can see, we have a lot in here. So, let's tip the bag out and go for it one by one. I'm sure there's a few loose pieces in the bottom here. So, 
We have, starting from the front, we have here a Cyberman. This looks like a Series 6 Cyberman because it's got the um, chest pieces. It's slightly worn and it's got cracks and things in it. Um, that's very nice to have because, again, I actually wanted one of these anyway, so that's a nice one to have in terms of spares. A Yana, not a Yana, um, Saxon, sorry. Saxon Master, but this is, again, this is a nice, actually, this is a one that I will keep because I don't know how well this is going to come up on camera. Some people might know there are several different versions of the Yana, uh, of the um, Harold Saxon Master. There are versions of it which have a waxy sculpt head, but there are also versions which have a painted sculpt head, which is what this has got. So that's definitely one that I'm going to keep as is because it's got the painted version. Uh, we have uh, an Amy Pond figure. Um, again, I'm not sure exactly what I would do with this. Some people have suggested using an Amy Pond for a body for my um, my uh, Remembrance of the Daleks battle computer. Um, the only thing with this is her limbs don't um, her limbs don't move and the dress is solid, but I might be able to rework that somehow. Uh, again, it's not one that I was planning on buying, so it's it's a nice one. It's uh, it's a nice one to have spare. Uh, Oswin Oswald, again, nice one to have spare. So we're getting a re-release of these soon. Um, but I may I may keep this one um, as is because I do have the impossible set. <coughs> Excuse me, I do have the impossible set all in one piece, but I don't have any loose spares, uh, loose ones of these uh, for my collection, so I'll probably keep that one as is. We have a strange cloak thing. I'm not really sure. Oh, that, I believe, is of the um, Collect and Build Gelf. That's quite big, actually. I didn't realise they were that big. Um, I had planned on buying a Collect and Build Gelf at some point, but now I've got one part. I might buy all the other parts and build it myself. Um, we have a Sontaran, doesn't have the head removed, and I believe I have seen there are some feet floating around in the bottom here. Now this is again good for me because I do need some spare Sontarans. I've got a couple of um, I've got a couple of uh, of um, customs coming. It's a shame they don't have the helmets removed, but I'm sure I can still make use of them because I need things such as the hands and the feet and the legs. So it's it's nice to have those ones. Martha Jones, Martha Jones is Martha Jones, so. Uh, we've got a Captain Jack figure. That's a nice one to have intact, again, because people who saw my recent custom figure showcase will know that I've uh, got one of these um, in parts, but uh, which is probably what I'll use this one for, but I'll keep this one together, because there's a comparison I want to do when I get the Brigadier figure. Uh, we have an Ood, always nice to have an Ood. Um, again, it's nice to have this, actually, because I was planning, in fact, there's another Ood, even better, uh, because this is the one that I wanted uh, potentially for some future customs. I wanted the robes and things like that. So, um, yes, very nice to have those two together. Hoiks, we have, not Hoiks, um, a Hath. I don't know why I called it a Hoiks. It's not a Hoiks, a Hoiks is different. Um, <laughs> Hath figure, very nice to have. Um, again, I've always wondered about these. I've always been interesting about these because of the of the liquid inside the little green thing. Obviously, it's not liquid as you can see; it stays still. But it's certainly a it's certainly an interesting figure. Um, could very well be repurposed as some kind of military figure. I have no idea what yet, but it's it's a nice one to have. Uh, Cyberman. Oh, oh, we got oh, so we got two Cybermen. We have got uh, another Cyberman from uh, series six. Uh, I believe it's the same variant, but this one has had one of its head handle snapped off, but that doesn't matter because again, that gives it a nice worn look for that one. <coughs> we have another Cyberman back here and this is, oh, this is the Cybus Cyber Leader from the original Collect and Build series, um, which came with the Tomb Cyber Controller. These are quite uh, rare, so that is definitely one that I'm going to keep well preserved. Uh, we have a Weeping Angel. As I said, there's a few spares and things floating around at the bottom here, so I'm probably going to see what I can make up. We have a Weeping Angel who's missing a wing, but again, I've got a fair few spare Weeping Angel wings. We have another Weeping Angel. This is the translucent one. These are brilliant to have because I love I love translucent figures. Um, I've already got one of these, but it's it's nice to uh, it's nice to have another one. In fact, 
this has, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but that has the non-screaming face, which is a variant I don't have. So, firstly, that's another one for me to keep in my collection. Secondly, I don't know. I'll look it up, and again, there'll be an annotation. That might be a rarer variant, so I'll put that to one side to go through. We have another Cyberman, we have uh, the destroyed Cyberman from Series 2. Again, I never got one of these, but I was always interested in them, so I'm nice. it's nice to have one in my collection, because it's certainly got some very interesting uh, detailing on it, where it's been destroyed. Um, I never really quite worked out why it's been destroyed like that. Obviously, it's from the, the uh, Doomsday episode, so I'm guessing it's supposed to have been blown up by a Dalek, but it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting variant to have, certainly. Um, who else do we have? We have an Auton. Nothing really to say about the Auton. The Auton is an Auton. There's several um, Jadoon in here. We've got versions. Those Vons have the helmets on, and we've got a helmet off version. Yeah, not really a huge amount to say about the Jadoon, but they're very nice figures to have. And I, um, in my previous unboxing the figures I got, um, I mentioned about I could possibly turn a Jadoon into. Um, a Krogan from Mass Effect, so it'd be nice to have some extra ones because that'd be I can make a small Krogan clan. Uh, Grandma Connolly figure from Series Two. Again, not a huge amount to say about those, but a nice one to have in terms of spare parts. We have a whole set, or at least I believe near enough a whole set of Clockwork Androids. Again, these are very nice to have as spares because there's not really a huge lot I can do with them as separate pieces but um for those who have seen my uh um three erd doctors uh series will know that these um cravat pieces especially on this one is good for replacing on the cravat of the uh third doctor figures um, i'm sure the other pieces would come in useful as well but these are very nice ones to have because it's nice to have all three of them together we have a Heavenly Host, again, not one that I've ever really collected before and I'm not sure what I would do with it in future, but I'm sure I could find a use for it uh, some way, something to do with it, so it's a, it's a very nice one to have and I apologise for looking up his skirt, but he's actually, I've never noticed this before, he's got some very nice detailed boots, they could come in useful as, as spares and things like that, so that's a nice one to have. Uh, we have a... Now, what were these called? Smilers. Now, uh, we have a Smiler. Again, not really sure what I would do with this as spares, but it's uh, it's still a nice, interesting piece to have. We have another Space Pig. Again, for those who watched my previous unboxing video, video will know that I said that the Space Pig I could use to turn into a um, Volus from Mass Effect. So again, I could create two Volus. We have a Weeping Angel here, and we have some wings as well. This is and um, looks like the regenerating uh, Weeping Angel. So again, that's a nice one to have because that is a different Weeping Angel variant uh, to anything I've had before. And I do like the um, I do like the uh, sort of worn and torn look. That's very nice one to have. So uh, Slavine figure. Slavine figure is a Slavine figure. As I said, I had one of those in my previous unboxing, so it's nice to have one of those. We have a canine. We have a rusty canine, which is nice because I've got a clean version of canine, so it's nice to have a rusty variant as well. Uh, some more. We've got another. Ah, oh, that's for that one. So we've got another thing. So I'll leave all the spares to the end because I'm going to go through those. Uh, some scarecrows. Uh, I already have several scarecrows, but again, it's nice to have them. Um, it's nice to have them. Some more ones spare to do whatever with. We have a peg doll. I've never had one of the peg dolls in my collection, so that is certainly is a very strange looking figure. Um, again, I'm not really sure what I would use it for, but it's certainly one that is interesting to say the least. Um, I might find a use for it in future. We shall see. We have a Vashta Narada with the skull inside. Again, not a huge amount to be said about that, but still a nice one to have. We have a Sycorax figure. Again, not a huge amount to say, but then actually the nice thing about these Sycorax figures is the cloak. The cloak can be used on several things, so that's a nice extra to have. Uh, we have a Pyrovile Priestess figure. Now this is good because I was planning on getting another one of these because I was gonna try and uh, use one of these uh, as a figure base for a Katarina figure for my figure animation, so it's nice to have that. We have some more pieces here, I'm noticing. I don't think we've got them all. We've just got several uh, several pieces that are, I believe, of 
the um, off the collect and build um, Gelf figure. So that's certainly some very interesting pieces to have here. Again, maybe it will help me buy all of the other bits in future. We've also got the head, which is quite a nice piece because um, I know some people have suggested about using the head as a uh, regenerating doctor head. It's got a bit of a sinister smile on it though, so I'm not sure which one to use it for. That's a nice one to have. We have Rose Tyler. Uh, always nice to have a Rose Tyler figure. I believe that could be the newer B&M variant, but um, it's got a different paint application on it. But it's still a nice one to have. Oh, getting cramped in my legs now. Um, we have some more. We have another Weeping Angel, another regenerating Weeping Angel, which is a nice one to have. Well, it's not the regenerating one. It's just got a different paint application on it, but that is a nice Nice one to have, a nice one to have with a different paint application. We have another uh, Oud figure. Again, not really much to say about an Oud figure. It's an Oud figure. Uh, Corwin from the uh, 42. Um, I believe, now I'm looking at this, this could be... I've had another Corwin figure in the past and it had a much lighter paint application than this one so I don't know if there was a second I believe there was a second re-release of Corwin if that's the case then this is an updated um, this is an updated uh, paint sculpt which is certainly nice to see a nice variant we have I'm sure some of you have seen it by now but I've just seen it we have a Churchill figure which is br <laughs> uh, not now Churchill uh, we have a Churchill figure which is brilliant because uh, as I said previously my other Churchill figure was stolen. Um, the Churchill figures are relatively rare these days, so um, I, I'm, I'm tempted to keep this one as it is, but one thing that I did originally plan to do with my Churchill figure was to go a bit off topic of Doctor Who, and I was gonna make a set of Laurel and Hardy customs, because I'm a huge Laurel and Hardy fan, and I was gonna use this one for, um, for Ollie, and then I was gonna use whichever one for Stan, so, um, so I might, I don't know, I'm undecided about what I'm going to do with that yet. We have a Grask figure. Um, not really much to say about the Grask figure, but again, that could come in useful for spares of some kind. In fact, I could, what I could do, because I know a lot of people do uh, like, like the, um, the character, I might turn that into a Grosk from Sarah Jane Adventures, because uh, I um, never had one of those spare before, so I might as well do that. We have Banner Cafalata. Uh, now, one thing I've always wondered about Banner Cafalata is he does have... So I always wondered if he had his cyborg stuff underneath. Um, that's a nice little figure to have, because again, because that's something that's a little bit a little bit different, so it's a nice one to have as part of the collection. We have Prisoner Zero. Now, I did want a Prisoner Zero for something, but for the life of me, I cannot remember what it was. Um, I'm sure it will come back to me, but it's a very interesting, quite creepy looking figure to have there. Uh, we have a Ganger 11th Doctor. Again, these are always nice to have because it's got the... Um, it's got the uh, newer version of the 11th Doctor's body sculpt with the ball joint arms. Uh, Rory Williams, um, I'm not really sure what I would do with a Rory Williams figure, um, but I know the, the shirt piece actually uh, I can use for a potential custom in future. Um, I've been meaning to get one, so that is a nice one to, to have that I might well use in future. We have Mickey Smith. This is where we're getting to sort of the bottom of the pile. There's a few... Uh, figures here which again are not particularly rare, there's not a huge amount to do with these. Uh, Pig Slave, another Auton, we have a Jabe figure. Jabe's always nice to have because of the, the dress is surprisingly um, the dress is surprisingly uh, flexible in terms of what you can make with it. We have another TV set, wire TV set, a Gelf figure. Now, if you excuse me a minute, I'm going to do something a bit odd. I don't think, or I don't know, now, I don't think this is the glow-in-the-dark version. I will keep a lookout for that, because if I put it on my shelves and it starts glowing in the dark and I see an eerie face, I know I was wrong. <laughs> oh, she's got a side mat up her skirt. Hey. <laughs> um, so, yeah, nice to have one of those. We have a Time Lord figure. Time Lord figures are always nice to have. Um, at the moment, I don't actually have any, um, any plans to make another Time Lord. So, it's nice to have this spare, because I've got a box Time Lord, so it'd be nice to have this one alongside the boxed one loose. And then we have a lot of small, oh, we've got a Jamie figure uh, in the um, empty child figure. And then we've got a lot of very small um, loose pieces. We've got a couple of Toclophane. 
we have a um, ancient tenth doctor, uh, Sontar and gun, always nice to have, a, another spare uh, weeping angel wing, although the weeping angel for that could be in the other box, a lot of side mats, um, several spiders uh, from uh, New Earth and um, End of the World, Adipose, a Dr. Constantine gas mask head, a Sontaran helmet, as I said, lots of side mats and a partridge in a pear tree, which is actually a small gun. Um, so that's what's in the first bag, so it's time to have a look at what's in the second bag. Okay, so we have the second and last bag in this box, so let's see what we've got in here. Uh, so there's a few duplicates in here which I'll take out which we've already gone over. We have a couple of more Sycorax. Uh, we have quite a few Weeping Angels by the look of it. A, I think that's all of them. So yeah, we've got ooh, quite a few Weeping Angels. Uh, these all appear to be the serene faced ones, but Weeping Angels are always good to have as spares. We have another Slitheme. Uh, we have a fair few Cybermen by the look of it. Um, so we've got a normal Cybus Cyberman, we've got a John Lumic Cyberman, and we've got a Pandorica Cyberman. Um, there's another Cyberman here, but to go along with it, uh, this is the Underhenge Cyberman. We also have an Underhenge Roman. Um, it'd be nice to get the. Um, it would be nice to get the Underhenge Dalek uh, to go with that one. Uh, oh, another ring, another wing, ring, a uh, wing from a. Um, Weeping Angel, another uh, Heavenly Host. We have another uh, Sontaran. Now this is good because this is the version that has the head on display, which is great because that is what I needed. Um, uh, and I think the rest of it, oh, we've got, we got another Ood. We have Ood Sigma by the look of it, um, which is again, a very nice, interesting figure to have, a bit different one for an Ood. We've got another Auton. Um, so let's see what we've got left over. So we've got a couple of Roman soldiers. Um, we've got some different ones here. So I think that's the Series 5 one. Now what's that? Oh, I think this one is, uh, this one, which I'll come back to in a second actually. This one is part of the, um, this came with the Pyroviles um, from Series 4. So that's a nice, interesting variant to have because he's got the beard on it. So it's a nice, different sculpt. Um, you know, I might be able to find a nice and interesting use for that uh, sculpt with a beard. We shall have a look and see what I can do with that. Uh, we have then a couple of pyroviles. Um, now these are very interesting figures. Again, I was looking at getting one of these uh, recently just to have a look over it because I've never had one in the hand before. Um, they are certainly very interesting looking figures. Obviously I've got two of them, so um, not really sure what I can what I can do with these, but one thing that might be interesting is I believe that the insides, by the look of it, it's all clear plastic, so maybe, I don't know how I would do it, as I've said before, I'm not that um, great when it comes to electronics, but maybe adding um, lights inside them would certainly be a very interesting project, but it's nice to have those because they're very interesting configures. We have Dalek Sec, um, again, very standard Dalek Sec, the, the Dalek Sec figure, but it's nice to have the double-breasted waistcoat because they do come in useful occasionally. We have a Yana figure. Again, not really a huge amount to say about him, but it's nice to have the spare Yana heads. Obviously, now we're seeing a bit more of the War Master with big finish. He's got a few costume variants, so it's nice to have those. We have... Whose body's that? Oh, I think this is Dr. Constantine, so this would be to go with the, um, in fact, yes, it is Dr. Constantine, because he's got a scar on his hand, but that would be to go with the gas mask head. Um, again, useful to have, because it's nice that it's got the waistcoat um, coat sculpt, so that comes in useful. Uh, we have Professor Bracewell. Professor Bracewell is always a good figure to have because of the waistcoat, so it's nice to have that with the waistcoat, and the heads do come in useful as well, actually, so that's a nice one to have. We have another Clara. This is the series, um, series, nine or possibly series eight i think it was series no series eight clara i believe i could be wrong i think it's a series eight or nine anyway um clara um again nice figure to have not something that i would have a huge amount to do with but uh this is actually going to come in very useful because um as i said in the previous one obviously uh we've got i've got the um 
I've got the impossible set Oswin Oswald and I was planning on using the Pyrovile figure, uh, the Pyrovile Priestess figure to make a um, Katarina figure for my mission to the unknown. Um, and so the arms on this uh, will certainly be useful in helping create that and I may use the hair as well. Um, but that's a nice one to have uh, as spares. Uh, Amy figure, again, nice figure to have for spares. I recently, I was planning a while back actually to um, make the Amy Pond figure that we are now getting in the B&M variants. Looks like the head's been blue tack back on. The head's obviously come off there, but that's not, that doesn't bother me because I would have taken it apart for spares anyway. That saves me, <laughs> saves me breaking it. Um, so yeah, so I was planning on doing that. So I'm sure there could be other Amy Pond variants I could do, but the Amy Pond figures again are not that rare uh, and they're not that difficult to get hold of. So I'll probably use this for spares for something. We have Novice Haim, possibly. Anyway, Cat Priestess figure. Again, not really sure a huge amount what I can do with those, but um, I'm sure uh, something will come up somewhere. We have a Silence figure with the closed mouth variant. Now, something which I've, um, I have yet to, to show on my channel, actually, which I will uh, show at some point because I found it in the bottom of one of my boxes, is I actually used one of these a while back to create a Slenderman figure. Um, which I was very proud of uh, because it really does look it's very slender man looking in terms of the figure so um, I'll, I'll have a look at the state of the figure that I've got um, but uh, it's been in the bottom of a box for quite a while so it may not be in pristine condition so if that's the case I might reuse this one to make a new one because it really is a it really is a very good figure to make a slender man figure so uh, you may see that in future we have another um, half figure we have Rassilon. Rassilon's always a nice figure to have. Again, uh, the Rassilon figure is nice to have because I've taken apart so many of these for spares over the years that um, I don't have any intact. So it's nice to have one intact because I can add that alongside the rest of my Time Lords. And lastly, we have the uh, Impossible Astronaut. I don't know whether this is going to be the River Song or, um, or Little Girl version. Place your bets. It is... The little girl version, which is actually what I was hoping for, which is great because the little girl head will certainly come in useful uh, for something in future because child heads and figures and things like that are quite difficult to get hold of. Um, I don't really have anything I can think of that I would use this spacesuit figure for generally, but it's a very nice looking figure. So I'm going to try and get the head out as carefully as possible because other than that, I really like to keep this spacesuit intact. Um, because it is a very different looking figure. Um, but that brings to a close the end of this unboxing. I'm not gonna try and get everything else back in shot because it would take so long <laughs> to move everything back in shot. But that is, I am blown away. I am absolutely staggered at the amount that Alan and Kath have, have given to me here. I mean, it, it really is just, insane I, I I was expecting a you know I was expecting a few boxed figures and one or two loose figures and a couple of Daleks and they've they've really gone above and beyond what I expected um, so really Alan and Kath thank you so much more than I can say thank you so so much for this box of donations because not only have I got some fantastic not only have I got an amazing amount of spares for customs here, but in what you've given to me with the Daleks, there's so many here that I've wanted in my collection for a long time and I never thought I would get. So it really, it really is amazing to have them all because it saved me so much money in the long run and these and these Daleks I can promise you these Daleks will have a have a fantastic home they will have a, a much loved home uh, as part of my collection now so again I, I really cannot thank you enough thank you so much for everything um, and that brings to a close the end of this unboxing video as always I hope you all enjoyed this video 
And once again, a huge thank you to Kath and Alan Johnson for donating all these figures to me. Like, favorite, subscribe, share. It really helps me out a lot. And be sure to check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. I'm doing my very first figure animation and you can get involved. There is exclusive content and rewards for those who do so and funding my Patreon in any way gets your name at the end of my videos. I salute you all and I will see you in another video very soon.